Introduction Hey kids, in this lesson you will learn about locomotion and movement in human body. Movement is a feature of all living organisms. Animals move from place to place. When an organism moves from one place to another place as a whole, it is known as locomotion. When only a part of the body moves, it is called movement. Movement also takes place inside the body as well. For example, our heart beats all the time. So, throughout this module, we learn locomotion and movement. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Describe types of movement Explain muscle and its types Explain structure of skeletal muscles Discuss structure of contractile proteins Describe mechanism of muscle contraction Explain skeletal system Discuss joints List disorders of muscular and skeletal system Types of movement The movement which causes change of location is called locomotion There are three types of movements in the cells of the human body Amoeboid, ciliary and muscular Amoeboid movement During amoeboid movement, the cell sends out many small cytoplasmic projections or pseudopodia towards the front of the cell. Ciliary movement Ciliary movement occurs in those organs which are internally lined by ciliated epithelium. For example, in the trachea, cilia beat towards the mouth so that the mucus containing trapped dust particles moves away from the lungs. Muscular movement Muscular movement is very important in human body such as movement of tongue etc. The property of contractility of muscles enables us for locomotion and other movement. Muscle Muscles are the specialized tissues originated from mesodermal layer. Muscular tissues are characterized by the ability to contract after stimulation. Muscles have the following properties. Excitability, contractility, extensibility and elasticity. There are three types of muscles. Skeletal, visceral and cardiac. Types of muscles. Skeletal muscles are striated muscles attached to the skeleton. They make up 50% of our body weight and they move and support the skeleton. They function under the voluntary control of the nervous system, so they are also called as voluntary muscles. Visceral muscles are the muscles which line our blood vessels and internal organs of the body. Visceral muscle cells do not have striations and hence it is also called as smooth muscle. They are not under the voluntary control of nervous system and they are also known as involuntary muscles. Cardiac muscles are the muscles of the heart. Cardiac muscle cells are often branched. They are involuntary and striated. Structure of skeletal muscles A muscle is composed of number of muscle fibers called fascicles which are separated from each other by a connective tissue layer called perimysium. Endomysium is connective tissue that separates individual muscle fibers from each other. Sarcolemma is the fiber of cell membrane present under the endomysium and sacroplasm is present beneath the sarcolemma. Each muscle fiber contains cylindrical organelles known as myofibrils. Each muscle fiber has hundreds to thousands of myofibrils. These are the bundles of actin and myosin and are important in muscle contraction. Each myofibril has alternate light and dark bands. The light bands contain actin called I band, whereas dark band contains myosin called A or anisotropic band. Actin filaments are as thin as compared to myosin filaments, so 
actin filaments are also called thin filaments whereas myosin filaments are also called thick filaments myofibrils are composed of many sarcomere subunits that are attached end to end perpendicular protein plates known as z lines form the lateral boundaries of each sarcomere a middle region of each sarcomere called the h zone only contains myosin structure of contractile proteins actin is a globular protein g actin which polymerizes in double helical strands f actin tropomyosin and the troponin form the other constituents of the thin filaments the tropomyosin extends over actin filaments and blocks the myosin binding sites one myosin filament consists of numerous monomeric proteins called meromyosins each meromyosin has two parts heavy meromyosin hmm and light meromyosin lmm heavy meromyosin has globular head which is the portion that combines with actin filament the component of heavy meromyosin that is the head and short arm project outwards at regular intervals and form cross arm mechanism of muscle contraction mechanism for the contraction and relaxation of a sarcomere is called the sliding filament theory during a contraction sarcomeres become short however the actin and myosin filaments remain the same size they just slide past each other changing their relative positions as the muscle contracts and relaxes an action potential must be triggered to contract from somatic motor neuron which reaches to neuromuscular junction it is a junction between the neuron and the skeletal muscle due to the depolarization of axon terminal it releases neurotransmitter acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft between the neuron and muscle the muscle fiber fire an action potential of its own as neurotransmitters trigger it this electrical signal passes through muscle fibers plasma membrane and it also passes into the plasma membranes tubular invaginations called t tubules sarcoplasmic reticulum is an organelle that consists of a membranous network sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium ions and then isolates them from the rest of the cytoplasm as the action potential passes through the t tubules the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium into cytosol the calcium ions diffuse into the cytoplasm of the sarcomeres within the sarcomeres the actin filaments are two strings of pearls twisted around each other the myosin filaments are thicker than the actin and have knob like heads at their ends troponin and tropomyosin lie on the actin filaments whereas myosin heads bound to the molecules of adp and inorganic phosphate as the sarcoplasmic reticulum has released calcium the calcium ions bind to the molecules of troponin after binding troponin shifts its own position and pulls the tropomyosin molecule aside when tropomyosin moves myosin binding site on each of the actin subunits of the actin filament gets exposed when a myosin head binds to actin and forms cross bridge after binding the molecules of pi and adp are released the release triggers the myosin heads to pivot forcing the actin and myosin filaments to slide past each other this movement represents the power stroke of muscle contraction for additional power strokes myosin must first bind to atp when atp binds to the myosin heads the heads release the actin filament atp is quickly hydrolyzed into adp and pi the energy released by hydrolysis prepares myosin head for another cycle as the action potential decreases calcium levels drop and tropomyosin again hides 
the myosin binding sites. Actin and myosin filaments slide back to their original positions. The sarcomeres of a muscle fiber contract and relax with each signal to form a motor neuron. Skeletal system Skeletal system is the frame for the body of animal and it is made up of bones and cartilages. Human beings have 206 bones and few cartilages. Skeletal system is grouped into axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. Axial skeleton It includes skull, vertebral column, sternum and ribs. The skull contains 22 bones and there are two sets of bones in human skull, cranial and facial. Cranium bones envelope and protect the brain. There are eight flat bones in the cranium that are one ethmoid bone, one frontal bone, one occipital bone, two parietal bones, one sphenoid bone and two temporal bones. The face contains 14 bones, yeah, two inferior nasal conchi, two lacrimal bones, one mandible, two maxilla, two nasal bones, two palatine bones, one voma and two zygomatic bones. Hyoid bone is present at the base of buccal cavity. The lower jaw bone called the mandible is the skull's only movable bone and the only one not directly connected to the other bones of the skull. Ear contains three tiny bones, malus, incus and stapes called ear ossicles. The vertebral column or spine runs along the back of the body and connects to the bones of the chest or thorax. It forms the central part of the skeleton. It protects the spinal cord and supports the skull. The vertebral column is divided into five regions. 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, fused sacral and fused cosigial. First vertebrae is atlas. Ribs are flat, narrow bones and there are 12 pairs of ribs. The first 7 ribs are called true ribs because they are directly connected to the sternum. The primary functions of the ribs is to protect lungs and heart. The 8th Ninth and tenth pair of ribs are connected to seventh rib with the help of the hyaline cartilage. These are called false ribs. Eleventh and twelfth pair of ribs are not connected ventrally. Hence they are called as floating ribs. Appendicular skeleton The appendicular skeleton consists of girdles and the skeleton of the limbs. The upper limbs are linked to the pectoral shoulder girdle and the lower limbs are linked to the pelvic or hip girdle. The pectoral girdle consists of two bones, collarbone, also called clavicle, and a flat triangular bone called the scapula. The bones of the forelimb are humerus, radius, and ulna, carpals, eight bones, metacarpals, five bones, and phalanges, fourteen bones. Pelvic girdle consists of two large hip bones called coxal bones. Each hip bone consists of three fused bones, ilium, ischium and pubis. The ilium is the largest of the three and forms the upper part of the hip bone. The bones in the hind limb are femur, largest bone, tibia and fibula, tarsals, seven bones, metatarsals, five bones and phalanges 14 bones. Joints A joint is formed where two or more bones are in close contact and joined by cartilages and they are also called place of articulation. Classification of joints Fibrous joints Cartilaginous joints and synovial joints Fibrous joints these joints connect bones without allowing any movement. Fibrous joints hold the teeth in the sockets and they are also present in the skull. Cartilaginous joints Cartilage fills the space between bones, so only slight movement is possible. 
These joints occur in ribs. Synovial joints. In this, adjoining bones are separated by a cavity. The articulating ends of the bones are covered with a cushiony layer of cartilage and they are stabilized by ligaments. Synovial joints are built to allow movement. For example, hinge-like synovial joint such as knee and elbow, ball and socket joint at the hips are capable of a wider range of movements. Disorders of muscular and skeletal system Misthenia gravis It is an autoimmune disease that causes weakness of muscles. Muscular dystrophy It is a group of genetic diseases due to which muscle fibers are susceptible to damage. Tetany It is abnormal condition characterized by painful muscular spasms due to faulty calcium metabolism. Arthritis it is inflammatory condition that affects joints. Osteoporosis. It is a disease in which the bones become extremely porous and subject to fracture. Gout. It is acute arthritis that causes pain and swelling in the joints. Did you know? The protein osteocalcin plays a significant role in the strength of our bones. Red blood cells is created inside the bone marrow of bones. Bones consist of 50% water and 50% solid matter. Summary Let's summarize what we have learned. The movement which causes change of location is called locomotion. Three types of movements in the cells of the human body are amoeboid, ciliary and muscular. Types of muscles are skeletal, visceral and cardiac. Muscle fiber contains cylindrical organelles known as myofibrils. These are the bundles of actin and myosin and are important in muscle contraction. Contraction and relaxation of muscle fibers is based on the sliding filament theory. Human beings have 206 bones and a few cartilages. Skeletal system is divided into axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. Axial skeleton includes skull, vertebral column, sternum and ribs. The appendicular skeleton consists of the girdles and the skeleton of the limbs. Joints can be classified as fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints and synovial joints. Disorders of muscular and skeletal system are myasthenia gravis, muscular dystrophy, tetany, arthritis, osteoporosis and gout.